Hey, what's up guys? Jake with Legacy 4x4 here again, back after a little bit of time away. But we're gonna start with the first project now that I'm back in the United States, and that is going to be a do-it-yourself powder coat oven. So basically, I had that small old kitchen oven that used to be in my shop. I have since now gotten rid of that. And where that oven used to be, I'm gonna build something that takes up about the same amount of floor space, but it's substantially taller vertically so that I can fit full-size parts in it, such as bumpers, uh, larger CNC cut parts, and random things off of the trucks that I would rather powder coat instead of just having to paint all of the big stuff that comes through the shop. So this oven's footprint is gonna be about three feet by three feet on the ground, but it's gonna be eight feet tall, which should enable it to fit pretty much any bumper off of any truck. I measured the ones off of my F-150, so I know it'll fit the F-150 bumpers. I'm pretty sure it'll fit most full-size trucks and other rigs, bumpers in it as well, as well as anything else that I can think of that I wanna fit in there. So for this, what we're gonna do today is start building the frame. So I was able to pick up the steel tube that I need to make the frame, and then I've got all the other parts on order. So we'll see, this is probably gonna be a two-part video. I'm gonna build the frame, insulate it and all that kind of stuff, and then set up all the electronics and things like that in the second video of this series. Anyways, you can see I've got the frame laid out here. I skipped past the part of me just cutting on the chop saw because you guys have seen that a million times. So now we're gonna just start straight into welding the frame up. For this frame, I'm gonna be using two by two by 14 gauge uh, square tubing. This is what my metal supplier had on hand when I went over there to go buy the steel tube and to place the order for all of the different steel sheets I need to skin this. So we're gonna be using this as the main frame. Now I know a lot of other powder coat ovens use the steel studs you can buy at Lowe's, but I spec'd out the price versus the steel studs, the number of them I would need to build as rigid of an oven as I'm gonna need versus just using two by two, and I decided that two by two is gonna be easier. It's a little more expensive, but it is easier to work with, and so that's what I'm choosing to use for this build. Now, on the build as well, while I was gone, I picked up a new Miller uh, Multimatic 220 ACDC welder, so we're gonna be testing that welder out for the first time as I go through this build, and I'm pretty excited to get to use that welder now. But anyways, you guys can see I've got the frame laid out. Basically, it's 36 inches wide, eight feet tall, so let's go ahead and get started on welding this thing up and we'll start to put this thing together pretty quickly here. All right, let's get going. I will show you guys around it in a second here, but as you can see, I've got the basic frame done. I know I skipped a lot of the welding stuff, it just gets kind of repetitive after a while, so I skipped through some of it until I had the basic frame done. As you can see, it is taller than I am. It is three feet by three feet around the bottom, and then it is eight feet total tall, so about two feet taller than me, which will give it plenty of space to hang a full width bumper inside of, which is the whole point of this, as well as like anything larger that I cut on the plasma cutter that I need to uh, hang in here so that I can powder coat like plaques and other random stuff that I cut out. So that's the whole purpose of this. So what I'm gonna do next is I gotta take some angle iron. I'm gonna use some scrap pieces that I had left over from these inner supports and then just some random small pieces that are in the buckets down there. And I'm gonna cut this down to about three inch sections. The whole point of this is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna weld it kind of strategically along the inner rails here and along these pieces of, of angle iron here in the middle so that I can have something to rivet the inner sheet metal skin to. So for the sheet metal skins, you'll see it here in a little bit, I'm gonna do a combination of rivets and tack welds to hold the entire sheet metal skins into place. So those skins should be coming in hopefully tomorrow. I went over to my steel supplier and I had them uh, cut them down to size for me and then add a couple breaks into them so I can make this nice and clean and professional looking, help really seal in the heat and give it a nice clean interior look. I don't have a 12 foot break and these are obviously eight foot sections and they do, so I just went ahead and just had them do it for me just to make it a little easier. But anyway, so next up we're gonna cut down a bunch of angle iron and then I'm gonna go through and weld it onto the inner frame here so that we got some, some meat for <laughs> All 
I got all of those little pieces of angle iron welded in. As you can see, it is now a new day. I just came back from the steel shop where I picked up most of the sheet steel. There's still two pieces that I'm waiting on that I gotta go back and go pick up tomorrow, but it's too late today and they ran out of material to finish cutting everything that I needed. Anyways, I'll go and give you guys a quick little look around what the oven's frame looks like to this point, and then we'll start installing some of the steel pieces here. Hi, Brittany. Hi, Brittany. All right, so as you can see, the outer parts of the frame are all made out of this two by two by 14 gauge uh, box tubing, the whole way up and all the way around. In the middle here for support, we use some two by two by one eighth inch steel, uh, angle iron steel, and that is gonna give all of that center support. Truthfully, the two by two box is plenty enough for holding an oven together that I don't need to have a whole bunch of extra supports going around throughout it since it's not super structural and there's no loads that are going into the side or being rested on it or anything like that. Ultimately, this is just a shell for stuff to hang in. You can see here, these are some of those angle iron pieces. I've got three of them here along the middle, one along all of the centers and then one along the centers down there as well. They'll be able to bolt it into the actual two by two down here, so no need to have extra pieces of angle iron on the bottom, just here along the center frame rails to cover the whole space up. And as you can kind of see here, I haven't cleaned these off yet or anything. This is exactly how they came out of the welder, but that Miller welder does a phenomenal job. It just like begs to weld really nicely in all angles and all conditions. So I am a huge fan of that. You can see they all turned out really, really nicely. Anyways, let's get putting some of these sheets in. All right, so I've got one of the sheets here on the table. I had it cut just to the basic rectangular measurements that I needed, and then I had the steel shop, because they've got a long enough break, I had them break one of the edge of a couple of the pieces of steel, so that when I slide it into here, I can kind of like sandwich the steel in between itself and make a nice tight seal, and then I can run high temperature sealant along the edges it gives it a nice you know, heat resistant sealant on the inside there and a nice clean look for the oven overall. So this is one of the interior panels here. I did make a mistake. Um, this is actually two inches too tall, but it's gonna kind of work out really nicely because then I'll be able to rivet it into the top of the, of the frame as well. So what I'm gonna do, I just turned on the air compressor and the plasma cutter and I'm going to plasma cut out some little two inch squares out of the two corners so that it will notch into the two by two really nicely so that it'll have a nice tight fit fully sealed up against the two by two frame. So let's go ahead and plasma cut out these pieces here, these little two by two squares, and then hang in the first piece onto the frame. So kind of a close-up shot just because I'm limited on room to place the camera uh, because of where I decided to put this while I'm building it. But anyways, you can see that I've got the insulation in, at least on this side. I've got the other side of the oven already done and all buttoned up and finished. But before I put this sheet panel on, I wanted to show you guys what this insulation looks like. So I'm using rock wool insulation. I got it off of McMaster Car, and it's good out to a thousand degrees Fahrenheit with the bare, you know, no metal reinforcing on it. So this is good to a thousand degrees. The oven should only ever get up to 400 degrees, which puts this well within the factor of safety for an oven of this type. This is what most powder coat ovens use. They use some form of rock wool, so this is what I chose to go with. It's a little expensive, but this is the right answer, and I don't ever want to take the oven apart to put different insulation in if I had to. Anyways, it comes in two foot by four foot sheets, which is like this right here, and then the rest of it I just cut down to fit in size. To cut it down, you just use a knife. It's easy enough to do. I did wear gloves and long sleeves when I did it just so I didn't get the wool all over my body. But this is what this looks like. So now, next up is gonna to be to hang the sheet metal panel up here and cover this whole side, throw in some rivets, and then do some tack welds to hold all into place. So let's go ahead and get on to hanging up this next piece of sheet metal and I'll give you guys another update shot before I fill in the back wall next. Right, 
so coming up next, now I've got to build the casters for the oven. So originally I was going to make the oven just sit on the ground for the heat insulation basically that the concrete would provide, but then I realized because I chose to make this thing out of two by two steel and 16 gauge steel that it is absurdly heavy. So I'm in the army, I'm gonna have to move eventually. So I need to have on wheels so that I can easily move it around both inside the shop and then eventually when I've got to put it onto a trailer and take it to a different house, I need to be able to do that. So I chose to put it on wheels this time. I'm using some six and a half inch tall uh, heavy duty casters that are rated for 400 pounds per caster. That should be more than adequate. I think the oven's probably about four or 500 pounds total. Again, it is very, very heavy. I'm gonna make these out of some quarter inch scrap that I have sitting on the sheet metal scrap stand thing that I have over there next to that 350. So I'm gonna make it out of some quarter inch that I've got. I'm gonna do a really simple, I'm gonna use a plasma cutter by hand, cut out an outline real quick for the casters to mount to, and then make some really simple triangular gussets. I think that's gonna be more than adequate and then weld that fully into the side of the oven into where the two by two meat is so it's got enough meat to grab onto. So let's go ahead and get onto that part next. And then that should pretty much complete the basic oven frame. Then we've got to add on the blower motor, the control box and the door and a couple other things. So let's go ahead and get started on these casters so I can get the oven pushed back and out of the way. I'll show you guys what it looks like in its final resting position. And then I think we'll get started on the door after that. Anyways, let's keep going. You can see down here what these casters look like. Again, they're big six and a half inch tall casters welded onto that quarter inch frame, bolted in with 5 16 hardware, and then welded onto the frame of the oven itself right here. Just a nice little simple angle and stick out. I had to make it stick out that far because the casters are swivel casters and I didn't want the oven to be six inches off the ground. I only wanted it to be two inches off the ground. So I stuck them out like that kind of at an angle pushed them off to the side, and now it can easily move around. I very easily by myself push it into the corner here where it belongs, and this is what that looks like. Now, the oven as a whole, as you can see, is very, uh, very, very large. It is eight feet tall, eight feet and two inches tall, now that it's two inches off of the ground, and it's got a three foot wide opening. Again, this is so that I can hang a full size bumper in here. That's the ultimate goal. I wanna be able to hang a full size bumper in here and powder coat bumpers, rock sliders, and things like that all one at a time. So this is big enough for that purpose, which is exactly what I wanted. It just makes it a very, very large oven. As you can see, uh, it's complete now. I've got all of the skins on it. Everything is riveted together and everything is tack welded on the backside where possible. So it's a combination of rivet and welded construction that just gives it the most flush, cleanest appearance without sitting here and doing full on welds throughout the entire oven. But we've got that all finished up now. On the inside here, I did this last night right before going inside, I did run the high temperature silicone on the inside of the oven. So it goes along the main seam in the back there and then along the entire roof as well around where all those seams are. That's going to help provide a lot of thermal insulation on the inside of the oven combined with the fact that the way I designed this is to have overlapping steel. So you've got overlapping steel, you've got the mineral insulation on both all three sides of it and then you've got the high temperature silicone filling up those gaps which make it a nice tight seal in there. On the ground, I am gonna come up with something, I haven't decided what it's gonna be yet, but basically something that can slide underneath the oven that'll provide it the thermal insulation in that two inch gap. So I'll do something down there with some of the scrap mineral wool just to give it something that can be removed but can also provide the insulation that the oven needs to function properly. Anyways, moving on, I think Maybe I'll install the heater elements next and then we'll get started on the door. We'll kind of see what, what we end up doing. Anyways, let's keep going.
All right, so we're making really good progress on this oven so far. I've got the casters in place. I've got the frame built. The door is done. Uh, I've got to hang the control box. I've got to build a handle for the front. I've got to mount the blower motor, and I might have to do some duct work on the outside of it for the blower motor to route air through, but we're going to get in all that stuff, and then I've got to hang the heating elements. So we're making good progress. I think the next thing we're going to do is build the handle, mount the control box, and mount the blower motor, and then after that we'll mount the heating elements on the inside, and I'll give you guys a quick walk around of what it looks like so far. started I unpackaged the controller and laid it all out and I kind of started putting it together and the reason why I started before I recorded is because I had no idea what I'm doing and I wanted to get a feel for it before I showed you guys all of the different components and I started just talking without actually knowing what I was talking about anyways as you can see I've got all of the pieces and parts sitting on the welding table here all organized and color-coded and all that kind of stuff ready to be installed so for this controller I elected to use a do-it-yourself kit from oberinstruments.com. Uh, the link to that will be in the description below if you're interested in something like this. The kit was about five or six hundred dollars, I think, but it has every single piece and all the wiring that you need, aside from the plug wiring, to set up this machine. I chose to go that route instead of designing something myself just because I thought it would be easier and you're kind of paying for convenience um, at some level and instead of buying all these parts and doing all the research and everything else like that, I found a kit that was reasonably priced that had all the components in it that was ready to just be assembled. You can also elect to get their kits fully assembled and functional if you would like to go that route, but that's about $1,000, so almost twice the cost. So I elected to go this way. I'm comfortable enough with putting electrical components together that this should go pretty simply. So as you can see, I've got all the electrical tools out and sitting on the table, ready to go. And we're gonna get working on installing all the components into this box so that we can hang it on the oven and start doing some function testing and doing some of the last little buttoning up of parts on the oven. I just finished painting the oven as well, so I figured while the oven was drying, I will knock out this control box and hopefully by the time I'm done with this box, the oven is completely dry and I can install the rest of the components. And then I will give you guys a walk around of it. I know I skipped the walk around earlier that I said I was gonna do, so I skipped that in lieu of wanting to paint it so that it could dry. So I just kind of kept going, crushing through it all. Anyways, we got this. So once this is done, we should have an almost nearly completed oven. Anyways, let's get working. All right, so the way they sell these kits is with a bunch of bare wire that you cut down to the right size. And these little fittings, they come in different sizes as well. You can kind of make out what those look like. And those fit on the ends of the wire. And then they make a nice, tight, and clean seal into the different plugs on the DIN connector. I didn't even know these kind of things existed before I bought this kit and I desperately wish I had because this would have made building the CNC an awful lot cleaner and better instead of just using bare stranded wire. So anyways, you just put the cap on like that and then when you clamp it down into the DIN connectors and into the relays or whatever in there, it makes a nice tight seal against all of the strands of wires and it keeps loose strands of wires from coming out of the seal which does happen sometimes. I've had multiple shorts on the CNC from little stuff like that where a wire gets out of the casing for some reason. Anyways, the way I like to do these, which I did learn when I was building my CNC, and this isn't included in the kit, so you'd have to buy this separately if you wanted to do this. I like to put on the little cap, and then I put some heat shrink around the end of it as well, just to kind of cover it up and make a nice tight, clean seal. And I think it gives a cleaner appearance for the wires when they're inside the box and just in general. So you put the cap on, run your heat shrink up to it, like so. And then when you heat it up, it'll make a nice tight and clean kind of wire in piece, so to speak. So I did that on the CNC machine when I built those and I'm gonna mimic it here on this. I happened to already just had a whole bunch of heat shrink because I buy it in bulk. So I had a bunch of it sitting here, figured might as well use some of it. Anyways, let me make this wire real quick and then I'm gonna probably skip the majority 
of the electrical wiring, aside from the few little tips and tricks that I learned, just simply because it's boring. And so we'll probably just skip through all that stuff and I'll show you guys a couple progress shots as we go and that'll be about the extent of it. But, just like that. So you can see now, that is what one of the finished wires looks like. Again, nice and clean kind of look to it. Even better if you do have the color-coded correct color of heat shrink, but obviously not necessary. This doesn't provide a whole lot of like pull resistance. Obviously it's just heat shrink, so if you do yank on it hard enough, you will pull the socket out of it. But once it's clamped into place, it shouldn't go anywhere anyways, because the clamp is gonna hold it down. All right, so we've got these wires made, got a couple more to make, and then we're gonna start plugging some stuff in. All right, so next up, I'm waiting on the wire for something to come in right now. So we're gonna build the ducting or ducking for the blower to route the air back down into the bottom of the oven. So the idea of this is basically to pull the hot air, because hot air rises, pull the hot air out of the top of the oven and then route it all the way back down to the bottom of the oven to make a kind of a circular effect within the oven, kind of similar to like the way a convection oven works. But the difference is, is this is gonna have a high temp blower mounted on the outside of the oven, which then runs the air down through a piece of channel down into the bottom of the oven. So to do this on the oven, I drilled a two and a half inch hole at the very top of it for the blower, and then another two inch hole down towards the bottom of the oven as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a flat piece of aluminum duct that you can get at like any Lowe's or Home Depot, stuff like that. I've got two small pieces of that. I couldn't find something that was exactly what I needed it to be, so I'm gonna make my own out of a piece of flat of this aluminum duct material. It's gonna bolt into the bottom of the blower and then just gonna be basically a tube channel thing down the side of the oven that then runs through that hole at the bottom of the oven to provide that convection effect. Anyways, let's go ahead and get built on that. I'll show you guys what it looks like and then I'll show you what the rest of the oven looks like before I move on to the next step. So this is the side of the oven as you can see. I've got the control panel all completely wired and put onto the oven itself where it's gonna sit. So it's about my chest height or so. It gives it clearance because it's gonna sit next to my toolbox. So this gives it the space so I can still pull out the drawers on the toolbox and it's not super high up where I've gotta go out of my way to reach the buttons. You can see the latches on the oven here and then you can see next to it, that's that duct that I built, all of this here. So again, you saw me, I just literally folded some piece of really thin aluminum ductwork. It folds super easily by hand. So I just folded that up, made a little flange, riveted it into the side of the oven, a few points all the way down, and then I ran this red um, high temperature silicone sealant around the side of it to provide a little bit of heat sealant on the inside of that. You can see that it bolts up to the top of the blower way up there at the top and then it runs down to the bottom where the other hole to push the air through the oven is. So this will get very hot, obviously, with hot air running through it, but that's okay. It's gonna be tucked up back behind the tool chest, kind of out of the way where nobody could ever possibly touch it. For the control box, I've got this fully wired and finished. I just left the wires loose on the outside, as you can see, that plug into it. So what plugs in the power and what runs the thermocouple and the blower motor, I just left them loose. I didn't feel like doing conduit and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I might come back in and eventually do it, but I'm trying to get this project done at this point, so 
Uh, that's all finished up. You can see here this is what the panel of the control looks like. You've got the switches for the two heater elements, the light, the fan, and then a timer reset button, oven temp um, gauge, and a time gauge. You can turn on or off the temperature and the timer alarms. You've got buzzers for both of those up here, and then you've got a voltage and amperage uh, readout as well. So pretty good kit overall from Ober International, or from Ober Instruments. So a really good kit, it went together super simply. As long as you're familiar with wiring, it shouldn't be too hard to put something like this together. To the inside of the oven here, I know it's kind of dark. I actually don't have a light in here. I don't see a need to have a light in here. I can physically see fine as I put things into the oven, which is what really matters. And all the actual power couldn't can happen outside of the oven anyway, so I didn't bother to put a light into it. But you can kind of see I've got the heating oven elements are up here. There's three of them along the bottom, and then one up towards the top, again, because hot air rises. So I did most of the heating elements down at the bottom with the assumption then that the convection will pull that hot air up to the top and cycle it through to get the oven uh, completely warmed up the entire way through the oven. I also put, I used some of that scrap ducking, and I made a couple little angle brackets in here super quickly, just folded them by hand and riveted those in the side. And I've got a couple of these little oven thermometers as well. These just sit inside the oven to tell you how hot it is. I've got them at different, different points of elevation throughout the oven so that I can look and make sure that yes, the oven's got 400 degrees at the top as well as 400 degrees at the bottom and there's not a huge uh, differential between the top and the bottom of the oven. So those are in there as well now. And moving on, I've got to wait for the high temp wire to come in. So now we're gonna get started on building the rack that's gonna go in here. So the rack is gonna be a, a slide rack kind of thing. It's gonna have four wheels on it all that can handle the excess heat of the oven. And it's just gonna be a really simple rack system. It'll have a hanger at the top if I need to hang like a bumper or something really long like a rock slider. And then it'll have a couple of slats where you can um, like rest a rack onto if I need to do like a couple of levels of parts. Like say I cut a bunch of things on the powder or on the plasma cutter and I wanna do like 50 parts at one time. I'll make a whole bunch of racks so I can do all of those parts all at one time in the oven, which will be super convenient. Anyways, let's get started to the rack. For it, I'm gonna use more two by two square tubing and a little bit of two by two angle to make the racks themselves. Anyways, let's get going. Change of plans, I decided I'm going to end this video here now, and the reason for that is simply because I think this wire is gonna take at least another week to come in. I need to get this video edited and get it published for you guys to watch so that I can move on to the next project. So when the wire comes in, I'll just plug it up myself, and then we'll do a test thing with the powder coat oven. It'll probably see part of it in whatever my next video is gonna be. You'll probably see me using it so you can verify that the oven does in fact work, but I promise you it's all wired correctly and it is gonna work just fine as soon as I get those last uh, four wires in the mail. Anyways, let me show you guys around the oven and then I'll close out this video and we'll get on to the next thing. This is the control box for the entire oven right here. You can see it's got a light button, fan button, both of the heater buttons, a temp and a timer alarm. You've got the temp and timer alarms up here at the top and then you've got a voltage and an amperage uh, readout up here as well. And you got a big heat sink up here that is used for the relays. On the inside, it's kind of a mess. I want to button up some of this wiring in here a little bit, but you can see that it's all finished. It goes together pretty simply. It's just, you know, simple little connectors like anybody that's done any electrical work would be uh, used to. Everything's all labeled. Everything goes together super quickly, um, as long as you're, you know, somewhat familiar with putting together electrical boxes. So that's all finished.
Over on the side here, up here, you can see the ductwork that we folded and bent and kind of how it fits along the outside of the oven here. And you can see the blower motor up at the top there, which will pull hot air from the top of the oven and circulate it back down to the bottom of the oven, allowing it to have a convection-like effect in here. On the outside of the door here, you can see these are what the latches look like. These are just the simple kind of latches that you can get on Amazon for a few bucks. Um, Those latches work uh, well enough. You can see I've got one side of the latch just both bolted and welded onto the door, and then I've got the other side of the latch just bolted into the frame side of the oven here, as you can see. You can adjust it, get a nice tighter seal, whatever you want to do. The front of this door, I made a super simple handle out of just one inch square tube that I had some scrap of, just enough scrap to make a nice little handle, but that works, it's a handle. And then on the inside, you can see this is the lava lock thermal seal stuff that you can get. It's self-adhesive, so it's got like 3M adhesive on the back of it. It just sticks right to it just like that. And you can see it's ran the whole way around it with a double border um, up at the top and then just one along the sides. Inside here, I'll try to get this out real quick. So it is kind of hard to see in here because obviously the entire inside is painted black and like I said I didn't put a light in it for just simplicity reasons. But there are four heating elements inside here. I'll try to get a better photo here in a second. And as you can see there's three at the bottom, one at the top, and then there's a total of two of these oven thermometer gauges as well at varying heights throughout the oven to verify also that the inside of the oven is where it's supposed to be. In addition to that, there's also a thermocouple in here, and it has an exterior readout on the control box that shows the voltage in the inside of the oven as well. I've got that thermocouple mounted right in the halfway point of the oven, so it gives the center point temperature of the entire oven. But that is what the inside of the oven looks like. I'll show you guys the rack, and we'll close out. All right, so this is the rack that I made for it. As you can see, it's got one of the shelves um, not finished yet because I don't have any expanded metal. So next time I go to the metal store, I'll just get a sheet of steel um, so I can do that. Or maybe I'll use some scrap other steel and plasma cut out a piece of expanded steel on it. I haven't really decided yet. Uh, but I also need a couple more pieces of two by two angle as well because I ran out of that when I was making this first rack. So I kind of misjudged how much I would need. As you can see, the main frame of the rack is made out of 2x2 two by, two by 14 gauge um, box tubing, the same as the oven is, and it's just a simple, it goes up just shy of 8 feet tall, and then it's got the hanger, and it's got some wheels on the bottom of it. And so up here at the top, which, so up here at the top of the rack, I took a 500 pound metal hanger, and then I welded it to a piece of DOM scrap, and I welded that DOM scrap to the top of the frame. So that provides it enough uh, rigidity and support up there to hang hopefully a full size bumper, rock sliders, things like that. So the idea then would be that you can hook something really big, like really wide or really tall, up to the top of this hook and let it hang vertically in between this rack, powder coat it, and then slide the rack into the oven for it to get baked. So when you're not using these racks, these racks pull out like so. And as you can see, there's a spot there where the metal will go so that you can hang things or sit things on these racks as well. The goal being so that if I had like a bunch of small parts that I was powder coating all at one time, I could powder coat them all on these racks, push the whole thing into the oven, and then do like a bunch of things all at once. There's also enough space that if I wanted to hang something smaller, I could put a rack in and then hang it from the rack to powder coat that. So. Lots of options, lots of flexibility. I chose to go with a standalone rack so that I can slide it out and then here in like the middle of my shop I can powder coat it and then roll it back into the oven to get baked instead of having some kind of complex drawer system within the oven itself. Uh, the wheels on this are cast iron wheels. They're rated for 250 pounds a piece. So should be plenty strong enough. They're just small wheels. You can get like Ace Hardware or Lowe's or whatever like that. 
but it's strong enough to support this frame itself as it rolls in out of the oven, and they can handle up to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which was the whole point, because they're gonna be going in and out of the oven a lot. Uh, I obviously didn't paint this because it's gonna get a lot of powder on it just from use, so I chose not to paint this. I'm just gonna leave it bare, and then kind of like let all of the different powders just coat it as it goes in and out of the oven over time. But anyways, that's it. That is the entire powder coat oven. All right, so that's gonna finish up this build for this guys. Uh, like I said, sorry that I can't show you that it works because I'm waiting on those high temp wires to come in. They're shipping from God knows where, but they are taking their sweet time getting here. So anyways, the oven is finished. All of the accessory parts are almost finished. Next time I go to the seal supplier, I'm not in a rush for it. So next time I go, I'll pick up the rest of the two by two I need. So I make the last two racks and I'll make the little flat portion in there for the stuff to sit on as well. So that'll be the next time whenever I go to the steel supplier, I'm not gonna make a special trip just for that. But the oven itself is finished. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Some of the paint work is not great because I sprayed it kind of quickly, but it's good enough. It's an oven. It doesn't need to have a perfect showroom quality paint job on it. Anyways, I'm very happy with the oven. I'm very happy with the whole project. It did take a little longer than I was expecting and it did cost a little bit more than I was expecting due mostly to the price of steel. Uh, and everything else kind of just added up a little more rapidly than I thought. But I think it turned out really well. It is really freaking heavy due to the fact it's made out of 16 gauge and two by two, but that's what my steel supplier had that was the most cost effective for what I was looking to do. So that's what I went with. Anyways, it's heavy, it works, it looks great, and it's gonna take its spot here in the shop and it's gonna get used on a whole bunch of new projects that we got coming up. So anyways, uh, if you guys liked the video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.